Hi there, it's Pat from PJM Scheduling Services. So today we're gonna to talk about uh, creating a WBS, a work breakdown structure. So this is, this is uh, we, wanna, we wanna have an organizational structure for our activities when we add them. So um, yeah, it, in, our, in our example project that we're aiming to create right now, the work breakdown structure looks like this. We have milestones, procurement, uh, prepare and submit. So if I was to collapse all of these to say level three here, apply that. So this is our breakdown structure. Milestones, procurement, prepare, which underneath procurement, we have prepare and submit, review and approve, fab and deliver. We have our construction. Uh, and then we have these five children underneath construction for our five different buildings that are gonna be going on. And then we have our closeout section. So this is the organization that we're gonna follow for our, our project. So if you saw that um, the uh, watching or watching us create the enterprise project structure in the, in the previous video, very similar to that. So let's go ahead and let's open up our baseline schedule template that we've been working on in this video series. So right now we have uh, a blank project. There's nothing under here. So in order to start creating our work breakdown structure, we're gonna click over here on these two blue boxes, WBS. If you don't see that, you should be able to go to under the project tab here, WBS. Uh, so either way, you can navigate to there. Um, so now we have our project and there's no WBS sections underneath. So following our, um, Following our organization from our example project, I'm gonna click add over here, and then it creates a WBS code automatically of one. Don't change the WBS code, just leave it. There's no reason to change it. What we're focused on is the WBS name. So we're gonna do milestones as a And then what I do is I click back on the baseline schedule on the, on the top row and I click add because it creates a child underneath baseline schedule. If I do, if I, whenever I'm, like wherever I'm clicked here on the WBSs and I click add, it's gonna create a child to that section. So um, for me, let's go ahead and delete this guy. So it created a child. Um, let's call this one uh, procurement. You'll notice the order of them it goes procurement first and then milestones, which that's not how I want it. I want milestones first and then procurement. So I just click on milestones and I use the up down uh, toggle here and I just toggle that up. And so now I have milestones and then procurement. So let's add another section and a little shortcut key. If you want on your keyboard, if you just click the insert um, key, that will, well, that will automatically create a new uh, WBS. So we can do um, construction. I'm gonna move that down underneath procurement. And then I'm gonna do one for a closeout. And I'm gonna move that down below construction. So what often happens, um, just a mistake that often gets made is you'll, you'll try entering the description here in the WBS code. And it's just, it's just not, not clean in my opinion, to do that. So I, I like just the the numbers that they automatically assign WBS codes. Because then as we start adding children underneath that, you'll notice it'll say, um, it's the project ID dot, uh, so it starts here, see the project ID. So then it's dot three. So that's the third WBS here, dot one. So now we know that's a child to the construction section. So it's just easy to follow that, that um, nomenclature that they automatically give to it. So let's, uh, let me delete this just so we're all on the same page here. So um, I want three uh, children underneath procurement. One of them is going to be for prepare and submit. Prepare and submit. And then we're gonna do review and approve. And then another one for fabricate and deliver. And then for construction, let's go ahead and add our building one. 
building two, uh, building three. Maybe I'll, I guess one thing worth noting is say you've like created a, a large WBS structure. Say you had like a whole bunch of different sections underneath building one, like you have like foundations and um, structure, you know, a whole bunch of uh, WBS things that you worked really hard to create. So what you can do is you can click on the, the, the you know, you can highlight the whole structure there um, and you can copy it and then you could paste it uh, some, somewhere else down the line. So, and it, it'll give you some options for like what you want to retain there. But just, just know that it's an option if you were creating, working really hard to create a structure that had activities and stuff underneath there. You can create and cut um, and paste different WBS sections in here. That is that is possible. So let's keep going. We got building four and then building five. Building five. All right. So now our WBS is complete and ready to receive our activities. So let's go back to the activities tab. And what you'll notice is this activities tab is blank, which I want to show the new WBSs that I, the, the sections that I created. So let's click up here, this group and sort by. And uh, right now it says grouped by WBS. Um, and I see this setting here for hide if empty. So what I want is to uncheck that and apply that. And there we go, that solved our problem. If this, if this here is blank and, and you don't, you're like, oh my gosh, like what do I even do with this section here? So um, what you're gonna do is just expand that, scroll down to WBS, which is at the bottom, and then make sure that indented is checkmarked and we want it to all levels. And we want this hide if empty to be unchecked. And so that's how we get it. So there's our WBS uh, section and is now ready to receive our activities, which we'll start doing in the next video. See you there.